In this video, I'm going to show you how to find hackers on your network with Wireshark. I'll show you 10 things to look for in a packet capture that show hacker activity or anomalous behavior. So let's get started. Users normally hit a few servers at a time. They use names to contact servers for the most part. When is the last time that you saw a non-IT user use an IP address to get to a server? Hackers, on the other hand, especially noisy ones, hit many servers very quickly. This behavior is not natural compared to a user. They leave a trail of evidence or errors in a packet capture. A normal user does not connect to 20 servers in one minute, but a hacker may. Hackers will scan your network looking for stuff to get into, just flying around servers and mapping out your network. They will identify servers and their functions for further exploitation. But let's think about even scanning just a single server. There are 65,535 total TCP ports and maybe, what, 100 ports open at the most usually? Even just scanning that one IP leaves behind a lot of noise in a packet capture. Send packets and maybe even TCP reset packets. Users do not scan large numbers of ports on a server. Apps that users run don't either. Hackers will send many requests to your DNS servers to find new networks and new servers. And we can see that in a packet capture. They may use brute force, but more than likely they will use word lists containing common names. They will also query PTR records to find server names and functions. Because your server's functions, and maybe their locations, are parts of their names, right? You see, all of these things that we do to make our networks easier for us to understand also make it easier for hackers to find what they're looking for. For the most part, user PCs do not talk with other user PCs, they talk to servers. Yes, there are some exceptions to this, but this traffic is always worth investigating. User-to-user -user file sharing or SMB traffic should throw up a red flag. User-to-user -user port scanning? This is not normal. If user PCs are manipulating services or querying the registry of other user PCs, this is not normal and it is not user behavior either. So we really want to examine any user-to-user -user traffic and make sure that it is legitimate. When hackers are scouring a web server looking for something to exploit, you will see a lot of web requests. Word lists of common files leave a big trail in a packet capture that we can easily set up filters to find. Look for a lot of web requests, sometimes even words in alphabetical order, like this. Many times they're looking for vulnerable web pages to attack. Another way web servers are attacked are by logins. If you see many login attempts with many passwords for the admin user, there's no way that a normal user is doing that. Also, maybe many login attempts with many users and passwords. The thing you've got to keep in mind too is the time period. Is an admin user really attempting to log in 20 times in one minute? We can also find login errors from all of their bad logins. All of these attempts will leave errors, which will be more of our trail of evidence. Are there tools that allow hackers to force users to log into the hackers? Yes, there are. All of what you're seeing now in orange are usernames and password hashes. This is bad because a lot of the times users use terrible passwords and their password hashes can be easily cracked. But the real question is, does all of this leave a trace in the packet capture? The answer is yes, it absolutely does. Here's what the packet capture looks like. For every username that you see here, there's also a hash in the packet capture. And once again, we are able to filter this traffic and see that it is not normal behavior. Other hacking activity that we can find in packet captures are attacks on Active Directory or manipulation of services. Attacks using built-in tools like Service Controller used over the network can be seen on a packet capture. Again, let's think about it. Does a normal user manipulate services on other PCs or servers? Here we are looking for Service Controller activity and especially interaction with services with non-standard names. Curb roasting is a technique that attackers can use to attack your Active Directory. They only need one low privilege account with a valid password to execute this attack. With only this one valid user, they are able to gather all of your service account usernames and password hashes. The hackers can then crack these hashes offline. 
This is bad because sometimes as admins, we make bad passwords too and give too much privilege to service accounts. But can we find this activity in a packet capture? It's not as simple as other things, but yes, we can. These Kerberos tickets are normally requested by hackers with RC4 encryption, which you will see as ARC4 in a capture. So when we are looking for Kerberosting in a packet capture, we will look for the RC4 encryption. That will be the giveaway. What if you see DNS or DHCP servers that are not your DNS or DHCP servers in a packet capture? The best case scenario where someone has accidentally started these services is bad. It will mess up your network quickly. But the worst case scenario is that you are being hacked. Hackers can use DHCP to redirect your users to their DNS. And if they control DNS, your network is in trouble. And as you can see here, sometimes when your network is being hacked, there's a lot of sparks and smoke flying around in your data center. Intruder alert. Or maybe these are their physical network defenses. Also, we will look for IPv6 traffic here. Do you see IPv6 traffic, but you're not using IPv6? This could be hacking activity too. <laughs> Something like MITM6, where hackers use IPv6 DHCP to give out IPv6 addresses, set themselves up as the DNS server, and perform man-in-the-middle attacks. The next few videos that I'm working on will be a deep dive into the filters and techniques used in this video and all of those filters are in the description. This video is actually recommended by a subscriber named Chain. Thanks, Chain. If you have any ideas for any videos or any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.